And we're now up to Memtes Omen Aleph. The Omar Rava, Rava says, Keman Matslinan Al Ktsire. The word Ktsire refers to Cholim. Matslin and Silusa is, of course, Tfila. And on a daily basis, we pray for the Cholim, right? Rofei Choli Amo Yisrael. And not only do we pray for Cholim, but another category, which is called Maria. Maria are the weak people. Says Rava Keman. These tefillos reflect the shita of Rabbi Yossi in Masech the Rosh Hashanah Tezayin Adam Nidon B'Chol Yom. The Chacham disagree and hold that the judgment of a person is on Rosh Hashanah for the entire future, not on a daily basis. But if you hold like Rabbi Yossi that a person is judged on a daily basis, then on a daily basis we're going to pray on behalf of the weak and the ill. Now, the very fact that Rava, in his language, differentiates between Ktsire, which are real sick people who are, you know, laying in bed with high fever, and Marie, the weak people, Shmami, no, what's the difference between these two categories? Well, the answer is Ktsire is Ktsire Mamish. These are real Cholim, like we said before, they're laid up in bed. Umari are the Rabbanum. They're not really Cholim. They're weak because of Torah Matesh's Koko Shel Odom, Mirov Limudom, and we should be mispal for them on a daily basis. Not in the bracha of Rifa'enu, because these are not Cholim, but in the bro- in the Tfila of Alpletas based Sofreya. So let me just. Uh... I don't have a sitter right here, but I just have a, in my phone, just one second. So we have here like this. In Rifa'enu, we have Halei Rufua Shleim El Chol so now we're talking about a maka or a fool. And then we fast forward to al tzaddikim vela chasidim. And there it says, I'll play tas sofreim, or somehow I'll play tas base sofreim. Okay, so that's a reference to Talmidei Chacham. And in Rav's language, those are called Marie. Because they are weak. So we have to pray on behalf of the Talmud Chachomim, Al Pletas Be Sofreim. And the Gemara says in Sanhedrin Chav Zion, or even, maybe even earlier, Chav Avam Beis, HaTorah Nikres Toshia. And why is the Torah called Toshia? Because Mateshes Kocho Shel Odom. You know, again, we're not talking about someone who learns Dafyomi for an hour a day. Here. We're talking about someone who's dedicated to learning full time and he kills himself like Mamis Atma Bo Shal Torah. That's called Torah Matesh Koko Shalodan. Like Ray Shlakish couldn't, you know, jump across the river like he did when he was the chief of the of the thieves. He quotes Rabbi Rabbeinu Yehuda, who has a Pirush, that's Rabbanan are not as healthy in their goof because they eat very small meals and they sleep very short periods of time. Oh, look at that. I didn't cheat. He quotes the Gemara about Reish Lakish. Okay. Now the Mishnah says that if a person takes upon a subaconum for a top shield, mutabi of it because a thick Parage is not used the lafes boas apas. It's not called the tavshin. Masnisen de lo kibavloi. The mission that allows a person who took a nether on a tavshil to eat a maisek dera ova when it's thick because ain't derech lochlam apas, that's against the bavloim who used to eat daisa, which is a maisek dera ova. But not only that, okay, they eat daisa. I also eat daisa. But they ate it with bread. That sounds like tipshus. 
because bread and daisa basically have the same taste. The Omer Abzeir, Babla Tipshoi. See, I'm not, I'm not sure what the word Tipshoi means. It, literally, it means like it's, it's, it's idiosyncrasy. The Achli Lachma Belachma, they eat bread with bread. In other words, if you take daisa and you dip your bread into daisa, you're basically dipping bread into bread. A lot of heavy starches here. And it doesn't add any taste to it. It's two tamim shavim. So the, you know, the anche Eretz Yisrael are making fun of the anche bubble and calling him tipshoy. It doesn't make sense that you're eating bread with bread. All right, I mean, he quotes the Marsha, it doesn't really help me much, that what's the tipshus here of the Anshe bubble, as they're accused by Anshe, so is the fact that they eat dice as if it was the main course. I'm sorry, the other way around. Dice should be the main course, but they're eating it as a tofel. Anything that you eat with bread is called a tofel because the bread is the ikar. Now he quotes the Teferis Sion. I'm not familiar with this. Now, what's the tipshus of B'nai Bavel? She'ein mekomam or ha'chokma v'atorah ha'machaya es baleha. So if you live in a, in a physical mundane world without being connected to Torah, then you need extra chiyus. Ki heim chayen, because the Torah gives you a life force. And lechem is a great source for life. A lechem yichya adam. So therefore they ate bread and bread, dice on, and pass. Omer of Chizda, de mishalahon, lolein nakdone de hutzal, why don't we ask the people who live in Hutzal, who are apparently fine schmeckers, you know, they're very careful about what they eat. And this is the question we want to pose to them. Hadein daisa hechad male lemichla. You know, how do you eat daisa? And here's the suffix. A or B. Dechiti belachmi dechiti, and desori belachmi desori. That's possibility number one. So if you make daisa from wheat, uh, from uh, wheat flour, then you eat it with whole wheat bread. If, on the other hand, you make your daisa out of barley flour, then you eat it with barley bread. Oh, Dilma, no, let's, let's get a, a contrast of tastes. Dechiti, a daisa that's made of kemachitim, you should eat bisaori with barley bread. Udesori, and a daisa that's made out of barley, bidechiti, you should eat with lechem osui mi kemachitim. So in the note here, based on the Marsha, he says that what are the what's the suffix of Rav Chizda? He says is daisa made of kemach chitim, made up of the same identical taste as chitim. As kemachit, as lechem that's made out of kemachit. Or is it possible that they have time and shown it? Why daisa is cooked, lechem is baked, and therefore we can eat them together, two different tastes. 
I don't think the Gemara comes to any conclusion here. It doesn't say teku. Rava achle v'chasise. He would take his bread and eat it with a daisa that was made of chasise. Chasise in the Gemara in Brochos is called Avishuna. I remember this from uh, Ketza Mavarch. It's Kemach Shel Kloyos. So they took barley kernels and they baked them dry. And these were barley that were premature. They were unripe. They were less than a shlish of Bishul. And after they dried them, they, when they, they put them into the oven after they peeled them and dried them, that's called Kemach Da'avishuna. And Rava would take a daisa that was made of this Kemach Avishuna and he would eat it with bread. Rava Baravuna Ashkechel Ravuna Deka Ochel Daisa Betzbeyusa. He would eat this uh, porridge. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not farina. What's you know that uh, that cooked cereal? What's it called? No. All right. Cream of wheat. Cream of wheat. Porridge. Give me another word that we always used to use. Oatmeal. Oatmeal. Okay, that's probably it. Anyway, he eats oatmeal with a finger. Why are you eating it with your finger? Why don't you use a spoon? It gets it's it's tastier when you eat it from your finger. And not only that, Kolsh came to Tartan if you use two fingers, and Kolsh came to Klaas if you eat it with three fingers. And there's a whole discussion here about what about four fingers and five fingers. So each one of these Amoroim respectively told his son, if they invite you to eat oatmeal or farina, then pick up your skirts and run a whole parsa, ad parsa. If they invite you to eat steak, then ad tlasa parsa. Run three parsa. And the Mefarish here, which is Ki'ilu Rashi, but it's not Rashi. He says that Daisa, now here's an interesting case where there's a printing mistake in the Masifta. I'd like to write a letter to the to the editor, to the publishers. They left out the word Ella, which is very important. He says, Daisa Eina so edis salev Ella ad kadei shir mahalich parsa. I guess in, in our language, we'd say the caloric content of Daisa would give you enough energy to run a full parsa, where steak will give you enough energy to run three parsos. If a person has saliva in his mouth after he ate something, call me them, whatever he ate, then he should swallow it. This is a very severe Easter if you spit in front of your Rebbe. It's We'll see the exception in a dangerous situation, but he says, Harak bifnei rabo chayev misa. That's a gemara in Erevin daf tzadi tes. Derived from the posse called misane of omovis. So you're going to have to swallow your spit. But there is one exception. Levar min kara, kara at the last, as we said before, vidaisa. In such a case, he must spit it out. Why? If he swallows his rock after eating delas or daisa, heim domim lipsilota shall avar. Avar is um, lead. So it's like a uh, 
a wick that's made of lead. And that has to do with the Gemara and Sanhedrin about how we kill a person with strafe, it means a strafe. Anyway, so these are things that are kashim leguf. They're not e- easily digested. And if you swallow your, your saliva that's full of this, uh, you know, this dice or this glass, it could be very, very dangerous. It's tough on the body. Not only in front of a Tamil Chacham, in such case would you spit, but even in front of Shvar Malka, that's a, a pseudo name for Shmuel, plot. You should spit it out and not be embarrassed to do so. Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yehuda, they were sharing a bowl of oatmeal. One of the two, we don't know which, he would eat it with his fingers, and the other had like a, a kind of a wooden, like uh, a wooden spoon. He says it's the klipa of the eights, like from the bark of the tree. And I remember when we visited Thailand, they actually served a certain thing in the bark of a tree. They would give it to you in the bark. Amar the one who is Achil Behutza, who ate it with a spoon, turns to his friend, Le'achil Be'etzvasai, and Masai Ata Machileni Tzoroscha. By eating it with your fingers, then you have Lichluch, you know, certain things get caught under the nails when you eat with your fingers, and then they fall into the the Michael, and then now I'm eat, and we're eating from the same oatmeal. Oma lady the one who was eating with his fingers retorted le the Achelbahutza to his friend who was eating with a uh, a spoon of some sort of wooden spoon. And Masai Atomachileni Rokha. What happens is that when you eat with this spoon then some of your spit gets stuck onto the spoon, and now you dip the spoon back into the daisa, and it gets mixed up with the maicha. He says in the footnote, in the name of the Ran, It's not like he washes off the spoon every time he, he digs it in inside. He writes here, Zesha Ochal bi etzba, the one who ate with his fingers, Kinech etz bom in a rok, Lifnei Shayamachnes is Yodu Shainis Likara. He would be careful not to put his fingers back into the porridge before he cleaned them off, because he realized that he had his saliva on the on the fingers. Rabbi Yudha Rab Shimon Aisu Likameu, Blusifin, they brought in front of Rabbi Yudin of Shimon a kind of unripened figs that are very difficult to digest. Now keep in mind that Rabbi Yehuda was a very poor person. Rabbi Yehuda Ochal, he ate it. He didn't have much of a choice. He was starving. Rabbi Shimon lo Ochal, Rabbi Shimon didn't want to eat it. Omale Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda turns to Rabbi Shimon, he says, my time lo Ochal, my, why don't you eat it? Omale Rav Shimon, Elu, these kinds of uh, unripened figs, they're bad figs, are very difficult to digest. You're not going to be able to clean yourself of the uh, excrement from these uh, bad figs. That's a reason why we should eat these bad figs, because if it's difficult to digest, it's going to fill up our belly. And Lamachar, we won't have to eat tomorrow because we still feel satiated from yesterday's food. Again, this is the way a poor person tries to stretch out a meal. Rabbi Yehuda, this is another story about Rabbi Yehuda, who was very poor. Rabbi Yosef Kameda Rabbi Tarfan, he was sitting at the feet of his Rebbe Rabbi Tarfan. Omale Rabbi Tarfan. 
why are your why is your face shining with joy? What are you so happy about? Omalay Rabbi Yudah responds, Emesh Yatsu Avadechel is Sada. Yesterday, your servants, because Rabbi Tarfan was very wealthy, they went out to the fields. They view on when they brought back from the fields, Trudden, which we said before, were beets. Vachalnum below Melach. And we ate them. They were so tasty without even adding salt. And we, we were in a state of simcha, we were very joyous. He says in the footnote, Rabbi Yehuda Hoya Oni, Veloya Darko Lechel Tardin. Tardin was a very special kind of uh, meal. And therefore, he was very happy on that day that from the Avdi Rabbi Tarfan, they brought him Tardin. And Heiru Ponov, his face lit up. Now, the Ein Yaakov adds the following, that this kind of a food, taradim, is almost a laxative, and it causes shilshul. And as we're going to see later on, Rabbi Yehuda was the person who waves the flag of constantly cleaning out your body from, its, from, from excrement. The im achal b'melach, if we would have had salt to add to the beets, then koshken shayu panenu tzahufu. Now, as far as I remember, when you make beets, uh, it's more sweet than salty, but I think it has a combination of salt as well. In the After my wife is asleep now, but, but uh, in the ingredients. Omalei ahimetra nisa, there was a, a, a sara nachris, who was suspicious of Rabbi Yehuda. Mora, you give decisions, you hand down decisions in law for Rave, and yet you're drunk? Because she looked at his face, and she saw that he was, he was just uh, red as a beat, you know, he was very happy, but she attributed to the fact that he was drinking. So this is a possible Chil Hashem, that a, a rabbi is issuing verdicts and decisions when he's in a state of drunkenness. Homole Rav Yehuda says, Hem nusa bidi. I'm taking a, an oath, be'emuna, that you should have faith in what I'm telling you is that he is a son. And he says to her the following, Ita imna, you think that I drink wine? If I taste kidusha, kiddush on Friday night, Havdol on Motsi Shabbos, Dalit Kosos on Leil Pesach. I get so sick because I'm not used to drinking wine that Chorgani Tzidi, I kind of um, wrap my head in Sudarim, in uh, kerchiefs from the headache that I get from drinking wine. And this last minute, Pesach had a terrace for almost seven full weeks. I have headaches because of the dalid kosas that I drink on the night of Pesach. Ella, if you're asking me why does my face shine, that's because of my chachma. As the Pesach says in Kohelis, chachmas adam toyir panecha. Now all of a first you may ask, why is Rabbi Yudha boasting about his chachma? <coughs> but the answer is it was a chil Hashem that the Matranisa was suspicious of him handing down decisions in law when he was in a state of drunkenness. So he went to the other extreme to prove that on the contrary, what she interpreted and attributed to drunkenness was his chachma. All right, he doesn't quote. There's a lot of uh, chasidus here on this pasuk. The Tzoki would always try to undermine the Jewish people and especially their leaders. So he says to Rabbi Yehuda, you are so shiny, you know, your, your radiance and your happiness. It's one of two things. Two categories of people who make tons of money without, with a minimum amount of tircha. Number one is Malve Ribis. You know, you lend money and you get usury, you collect the profits. Or Megadli Chaziri, those who grow pigs, apparently it doesn't take a lot of work 
and yet you fatten up the pig and you sell it on the market and you get a you get rich from it. So you must be one of these guys who, you know, you're a loafer, you don't do much work, and yet you make a lot of money. That's why you're so happy. Omole, so of you the response, you doi travayu asirin. With regard to the Jewish people, both of those professions are prohibited. We don't take ribis, and we certainly don't raise pigs. Now, taking ribis is a doraisa, but raising pigs is only a dorabona. So for sure, it can't be that my face is so radiant because I'm one of these professionals, because those professions are prohibited. Now, all of the first object here, what does it mean it's prohibited to rent to lend with ribis. We're talking about a guy. You're allowed to lend money with ribis to a guy. Ella, the Gemara says, in the name of Yehuda, why am I, why am I, why is my face, my countenance radiating? In my walk, my short walk every day, or maybe a few times a day, from my house to my to the base mesh where I learn, I pass 21 bathhouses, um, bathrooms. I'm sorry, 24 bathrooms. And he enters into each bathroom. What does that mean he enters? He goes into the bathroom to check whether or not he can... He can defecate. In other words, a person who constantly cleans out his system will have a clear head and a radiance of countenance. But when you are constipated or, or whatever, then you know your face gets darker. Rabbi Yehuda kad ozil be midrasha, shakil gulfa al kasve. When Rabbi Yehuda went to the base medrash, he threw over his shoulder what we call a kankan. And he would take it with him to the base medrash and it would serve as a chair for him. And it was a large kind of um, receptacle and he could sit on it. And this is l'chora, not l'fich vodo. Omar, but he would declare, g'dolem alocha shemechabedes es ba'alea. Tova g'dola osa malocha. So he says the following. The Gemara Kiddush and Adaf Ayin has a detailed discussion about certain malachas that are also for Tamil Chacham to involve himself publicly. However, this malacha is called Masa Kalim, what we call in modern Hebrew Sabal, a schlepper. And apparently this is one of those malachos which are not prohibited for Talmud Chacham to get involved in publicly. Rabbi Shimon Shokil Sana al Kasve. Rabbi Shimon would carry a basket on his shoulders. Omar Gedol Malach Shem Chaveres is the base of the Rabbi Yehuda, the wife of Rabbi Yehuda, Nafkis, she went out to the market, knocked this Amra, and she purchased wool. Of the Glima de Hutve, and she wove from this wool a very important kind of cloak, a very uh, magnificent cloak. Kad Nafkas Lishuka, when she went out to the market, Mechsayabe. She would wear this cloak, the Kadnafik of Yehuda Litzluye. Then, when she was home, it was from Yehuda's turn to go out to the base Haknesses and Davin, and he would wear the same cloak. So basically, he and his wife shared the same cloak. That's how poor they were. Have a Mikase Umatzli. He would wrap himself up in this very beautiful cloak. And he would daven. And while he was putting on the coat, he would make a special bracha. Barach sha'atani me'il. Atani means he'll be shani me'il. 
And he was so thankful to the Ribbona Shalom that he had the opportunity to wear this beautiful cloak that he recited a bracha. Zimna Chada, one time, Gozer Rav Shimba Gamliel Tanisa. Rav Shimba Gamliel was the Nasi, and he declared a fast, a public fast. Apparently, there was no rain. Rav Yudelo Asla Beit Tanisa. And yet, he didn't show up at the base on Nasi where they would gather together on a Tainis. Amrina and Lei, they told Rav Shimba Gamliel that you know why he didn't come to join us publicly? He's basically naked. He has no clothing to wear. So Rav Shimon Gamliel sends him a cloak. But Rav Yudah refused to, to receive it. And on the top of Dafnun, Rav Yehuda lifts up the machzeles that, he, that was covering him so that he could show these people that he wasn't poor and the whole place turned into gold, pieces of gold. He had a, a miracle. The Armalei Lishlucha, and he tells the Shliach of the Nasi, Chazi Mai Ika, take a look at how wealthy I am. So why don't I show up with all my wealth? And the people think I have no cloak to wear and I'm naked, and if I didn't show up. Miu lo nichali dishani bahadi alm. I don't want to benefit in this world from physical pleasures. And this is called Maisen Nisan, a person who doesn't want to enjoy the benefit of a miracle is Rabbi Yehuda. And he didn't want to benefit from a miracle. Okay, then, so this is where we'll, we'll stop. The next I got it is all about Rabbi Akiva. And I'll bid you a great day. Thank you so much.